Troubleshooting power-related issues can be difficult, but if we're aware of some common symptoms, it can at least point us in the right direction. Power issues can be really related to any type of computing device. So mobile devices like smartphones and tablets and laptops or desktops, servers, even storage arrays, printers, you name it. Now it could be related to a problem with an actual power supply that plugs into an electrical outlet in the wall, or it could be a problem that we might have that stems from a battery. Maybe a battery that no longer fully charges, or maybe the battery's fine, it's just not being charged properly, perhaps due to a bad USB cable. We then have to consider uninterruptible power supplies or UPS devices which can temporarily provide power when we have a power grid outage. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. The first consideration is making sure that you've got enough power or wattage to handle all of the components in your computing device. Now this would be more prevalent on the desktop computer side than it would certainly with a smartphone. So we have to consider the total power supply unit or PSU wattage. So let's say we've got a 600 watt power supply in our desktop computer. We then need to determine the power draw for all the components within the computer, especially as you start replacing items such as high-end video cards. Because for instance, if you've got a high-end video card that needs to draw 300 watts when it's running at full tilt, and your power supply unit's only 600 watts, that doesn't leave a whole lot of extra juice for the other components in your machine. And if you've got a RAID array consisting of five SATA hard disks, that can also draw a lot of power. So this is important to consider because it can show up with problems and sometimes the problems are intermittent or sporadic depending on how busy devices are. An uninterruptible power supply or UPS, as we know, provides temporary battery backup power. So things like servers and network equipment might be plugged into the UPS, which in turn is plugged into the wall. Now the UPS has a number of electrical outlets and the devices that plug into it can draw power from UPS batteries when the power actually goes out. Now it's temporary, it's not designed to be more long term like a power generator might be and so it really would allow for things like graceful server shutdown in the event of a power outage. Now we want to make sure that our UPS is functioning and that the batteries are good and hold their charge and there are usually utilities that come with our solution to tell us that. So what are some common power related symptoms to watch out for? Well, one would be no power on startup. For example, if we are trying to power on a server and it doesn't even give us anything, no beeps, no sounds, nothing on the screen, it could be a problem with the power supply unit. Sometimes you'll have a burning smell and if you know that that burning smell or smoke is coming from the power supply unit, naturally you want to unplug it immediately. Now, no power on startup could also be the result of other things, like if you've recently upgraded your CPU and it's not compatible or it's not properly seated, that can also cause no power on startup. So remember, with troubleshooting, we always have to consider what has recently changed. The other thing is intermittent power. So maybe the machine will power up, but every now and then it might just randomly shut down. Now, that could be due to overheating, but it also could be because when we perform certain tasks on the machine, it might require more of a power draw, such as when all disks are active, if we have multiple disks. So we might end up with intermittent power loss. The other consideration is random card or device failure. So the machine might reboot, or we might have one component, such as a disk, that sometimes just doesn't get enough power and doesn't behave properly. And that can be difficult to troubleshoot. What about having power for fans in the computer, such as for the video card, for the CPU, even for the PSU fan itself, but not enough power to drive cards in the device or drives? So we have to think about that, because that would definitely indicate that we don't have enough overall PSU wattage for the components in the machine. What about things like fan failure? Fan failure is going to be a problem. I've seen cases where there is debris stuck in the fan and it can't spin properly. Believe it or not, that can cause a problem, such as overheating of other internal components, which will result, for example, in the machine either slowing down or shutting down. So we have to think about these things as well. Finally, also, we might have the problem of tripping circuit breakers when we power on PCs or other components that have a high power draw, like large storage arrays or even laser printer devices.
Now, tripping a circuit essentially means that we are trying to draw too much power. So that's something that we want to keep in mind too, especially when it comes to the design of a facility that will house a lot of computing equipment in one area. So how do we solve some of these issues? Well, one thing you might want to consider is having a multimeter on hand. A multimeter device allows you to test electrical components, including power supply units, to make sure the correct power is being delivered through all the connectors. Naturally, if we've got a burning smell and we know what's coming from the PSU or smoke is being emitted from it, it needs to be replaced. We need to make sure that we have sufficient wattage for all of the power draw and the components inside the machine. The other thing to consider too is maybe just try plugging the device into a different electrical plug if you suspect the problem is with the power coming from the wall. Or try the PSU in a different unit when we're talking about things like desktop and server components. Sometimes you need to swap out individual components to find out where the fault lies. And remember, only change one thing at a time.